Hi, my name is Steve Rahi. I'm a customer engineer focused on management technologies. Today's discussion will be the start of a series focused on endpoint protection, which is part of Configuration Manager, which of course is part of Microsoft Endpoint uh, Manager. So this session will be brief. It's simply an introduction uh, of this topic. What I will say at the beginning is uh, these topics that we will talk about in this series uh, of endpoint protection in Configuration Manager also have counterparts in Intune. And so there will be a series on Intune focused on Endpoint Manager as well, but we're doing Configuration Manager uh, first. So the agenda for the, the discussion today, uh, pretty simple, right? Um, as you can see, what, what is Endpoint Manager? Why Endpoint, or, or what is Endpoint Protection? Why Endpoint Protection? And just a little bit about requirements of Endpoint Protection. So why are we discussing this, right? Uh, first of all, is, is just awareness. Uh, being able to manage endpoint protection is a built-in capability of both Windows and, well, the ability to manage is a capability built into a Configuration Manager in this case. Endpoint protection is built into uh, Windows. So you have this if you have Windows 10 for sure. And then there's some components where beyond Windows 10 uh, can be useful. And since it is there, since you have it in your management tool, uh, since you have it in your operating system, there are potential cost savings that you could realize. If you are an E5 licensed customer, then you already own these capabilities. And so uh, knowing about them, knowing how you can manage them, knowing what these capabilities are, uh, could be advantageous. Now, it could be like some customers that I know about, that you have uh, a third party product to uh, fit the, the needs of some of these solutions that I'm going to describe. And, and that's okay, right? What, but in, in the cases of, of customers I'm thinking about, even some scenarios that they need to deal with, endpoint protection really fits better in, uh, in some ways than their third party solution. And so it may not be that endpoint protection will replace a third party solution across the enterprise, but in some uh, niche scenarios, it might be interesting. And so that's, uh, that's a possibility too that we can think about. Uh, one thing about import protection is many of the features and capabilities, management and so on, that you will hear about in this series uh, are typically things that other groups handle in an enterprise, right? And so that's where, again, Configuration Manager, uh, in this case, really shines because with role-based administrative controls that we have in Configuration Manager, uh, it's really easy to carve out an experience in the Configuration Manager console that will allow uh, being, able to, um, uh, being able to manage just those features and capabilities that are of interest to your security colleagues while uh, not overburdening them with seeing other parts of the console and so on, right? So what is the focus of this session? Well, state up front, this is absolutely not a session or series that is focused on detailing Endpoint Manager itself. Now, there's a lot of discussion about Endpoint Manager. I keep saying Endpoint Manager, sorry, Endpoint Protection. There's a lot of detail about endpoint protection that is very worthy of discussion. But this particular focus is on how we can use uh, endpoint protection, I'm sorry, endpoint manager uh, itself to be able to deliver endpoint protection configurations and so on to your managed devices, right? So that's going to be our focus. Now, to do any kind of uh, context setting, we will briefly touch on uh, what the various components of endpoint protection are that we may be talking about uh, later in the series before we get to the how you manage it with uh, configuration manager, you know, kind of kind of discussion. But but our focus will be managing and using the tool in uh, configuration manager, uh, endpoint manager. To, uh, to deliver that management. 
All right. So that said, we are in the introductory session for uh, the topic of import protections. So let's just chat about real quick what import protection is really uh, all about. And so you see that endpoint protection is made up of several components. The first component being anti, and this is reflected in the order that you see things in the console, uh, anti-malware policies. So this should be very familiar to most IT people. And that is the process of creating and managing anti-malware policies and settings that are related to that approach, right? BitLocker management. So this is one that we've already had some discussion on and we're going to reprise that discussion based on some uh, uh, newer capabilities and, and tweaks that have been added to uh, Configuration Manager to facilitate BitLocker management. But this is all about the future where uh, the traditional BitLocker management solution known as MBAM, Microsoft BitLocker Administration uh, tool, is going to be deprecated and the direction forward will be to manage BitLocker with Configuration Manager or uh, something like Intune, right? And so this does manage disk encryption. It's something that you should be thinking about moving to another solution other than MBAM. Now, you don't, you don't have to do it immediately, but you should get started. Uh, MBAM is uh, end of lifing in 2024. And so this is, uh, this is a really good time to have the BitLocker management discussion related to other management tools and see how you can make, uh, make the transition. Another component of endpoint protection is uh, the firewall policies, right? And um, that would include managing the Windows firewall. So being able to create and manage those settings and policies and so on. And, and this is another one of those inter interesting things. You may very well have firewalls that are external to Windows in your environment, right? You may have uh, the, you know, a third party solution to manage the Windows firewall. And that's again, all okay. But being able to manage that, that Windows firewall, knowing it's there on the device and being able to manage it and set it the way you would like from the start. And maybe at some point, a third party solution will come in and take that management over, but at least, uh, you will have the ability to have the protection afforded by Windows firewall from the start since it's there, right? A lot of more, a lot more discussion we could get into related to that, but we'll leave it with that, right? Another component, um, advanced threat protection policies. So this is getting into the more, what I consider the more fun discussions with, uh, with import protection, um, defender. I'll use those terms probably interchangeably. So this piece really helps enterprises uh, detect, investigate, respond to various attacks uh, on your corporate network, right? So this is one that is a cloud-focused uh, capability, and we will detail that as we go forward. Exploit Guard. So this is a, a piece that protects against memory challenges, uh, helps safeguard memory, uh, has folder protection capabilities, network controls, uh, works in conjunction with... Um, anti-malware policies, but again, we'll detail that one as we, uh, as we go along. So we have Windows, uh, Windows Defender Application Guard. And so now this one is a capability that's really pretty cool. It's built into Edge. And what this does is as your users browse to websites uh, on your network, right, with their, with their machines, some of those websites that they will browse to will be ones that are known to the organization and are safe. Others may be perfectly safe, but they just may not be known to the organization, right? Uh, and then yet others may be uh, websites that are malicious. And so what happens is when a user navigates to a website that is not known as a safe website, then they're still going to be allowed to do it. But what happens is that website will open in a virtual environment that is protected from being able to have access to the operating system. So effectively, 
uh, you're sandboxing that website because you just don't know whether it's trustworthy or not. Likely most of them will be, but in the event a user stumbles across one that is not, then that website will, will be prevented from having access to the underlying operating system uh, and so on. So, so pretty cool. Whenever we get to that, we will uh, take a look. And then finally, uh, Windows Defender application control. This allows organizations to specify what drivers and applications are allowed to run on a Windows 10 device, right? We'll have sessions on each one of these, uh, go through, uh, again, what that feature is very briefly in each session and then turn our attention to how we use, in this case, Configuration Manager to manage that capability on your uh, on your devices, right? So that's briefly what endpoint protection really is. Now, why do we care about this? Well, first of all, as mentioned a couple of times, it's integrated. You have this. It's part of uh, your management tool, Configuration Manager. It's part of Windows 10 and can work with, in certain pieces, can work with other versions of the operating system that are out there, right? Adding additional value. So you have you have Config Manager likely already in use to manage your Windows devices across the enterprise. Adding this capability to allow Config Manager to manage your endpoint protection settings just makes a lot of sense. Streamlines, uh, potential uh, duplicative pur purchasing and so on adds value to the tool you already own, we've already mentioned. Uh, this a couple of times. So what is the requirement for endpoint protection? Well, Windows Defender is what we're talking about. Windows Defender uh, contains all of these different pieces. And so you will need that. Now, starting with Windows 10 and Server 2016, Windows Defender is already installed. That's what I mentioned. It's there. A management client for Windows Defender is installed when the configuration manager client installs. So even if it's not in the core OS, then we'll install it uh, if we need it, right? So that would be like Windows 8.1 uh, and so on that the endpoint manager, or, or I'm sorry, I keep saying that, endpoint protection client itself will get installed with the configuration manager client install. Um, the Windows Defender and endpoint protection client that is installed will allow you to do the things you see on your screen. So malware and spyware detection, uh, remediation, uh, rootkit detection and remediation, uh, critical vulnerability assessment and automatic definition and engine update. So network vulnerability, all these things that we've already talked about, integration with cloud protection service, uh, Hyper-V is supported uh, and needed in some scenarios. So. Each one of these capabilities will have some of their own unique requirements, but generally speaking, it's the management tool, it's uh, the uh, endpoint protection client, Windows Defender client, and whatever, and then you and then the policies, and then you can do what you want to do, right? So pretty uh, pretty easy. And that's really it for this first session. We're going to dig in deeper as we go along and again, talk about each one of these features, but wanted to kind of have this initial discussion to set the stage, talk about what these capabilities are. So we will wrap it here and see you next.